in this headline story, which is, of course, a concern around the country. That's after the release of the country's official unemployment rate. It jumped to 29% in the second quarter of the year, and that's the highest joblessness rate we've seen since 2008. Now, Statistics South Africa released the figures just yesterday. Uh, before that, the rate was 27.6%. That was in the first quarter, so increasing in the second quarter by 1.4 percentage points. The official figures indicate 6.7 million people are now unemployed. Now, that number is approximately 10 million when you include discouraged workers into that figure. Now, one of the biggest employers and economic drivers, ESCOM, has posted a net loss after tax of over 20 billion rand. The power utility acknowledges that it can't solve its problems in isolation or overnight. Aviwa Mtila uh, was at ESCOM's headquarters when those uh, results were announced. In what it termed a disappointing financial, operational and environmental performance, Eskim reported a net loss of the tax of 20.7 billion rand for the 2019 financial year. The Embattled Power Utilities municipal debt has risen to some 20 billion rand. Eskim blames its poor performance on a lower than expected 5.23% tariff increase, a 1.82% decline in sales volumes and escalating municipal debt. We are now facing the death spiral. And we are facing this death, uh, this death spiral because of South Africans, or of the number of our clients they are, that are moving off the grid. Another reason cited for Eskim's woes is an above-inflation wage settlement with unions last year. This amid acknowledgments, even from the president, about the power utility's bloated workforce. So how do we actually ensure that people have a life after Eskim? How do we ensure that if you are skilled at working in a coal-powered station, you'll be equally skilled and prepared for work in a solar plant, for example? Now, and that's uh, a responsibility that I think, as a society, we have. If anybody thinks we're going to throw out workers into the street, it will be socially irresponsible uh, in, in our kind of context and pretty much antithetical to the Bill of Rights in, in South Africa as well. The Eskim chairman, who's also stepping in as acting CEO, vowed to comply with the public protector's probe into controversial IPPs. However, we have contracts. To the extent there are contracts, you can count that this leadership of ESCOM will honor contracts that have been legitimately entered into uh, within the letter and the spirit. Eskim warned that it could see similar results for the financial year ending March 2020, with 20 billion loss projection before improvements materialize. Avi Wemtila, Johannesburg. Well, it's the crisis situation on everyone's minds this morning. South Africa's unemployment rate jumping to 29%, the highest it's been in a decade, more than a decade, in fact. Now, Trade Union Federation Kosatu, a member of the Tripartite Alliance, is blaming this on the current leadership. And for more on the story, we're joined in studio by the Federation's Deputy President, Mike Shingange. Mike, thanks very much for coming into studio. Yes, it's a crisis. Uh, it's been a crisis for some time, not just since this 29% uh, announcement. It's been incredibly high for a very long time. Is enough being done now, uh, since we heard from the SG just yesterday, that, that we are now in a crisis mode officially? No, thank you. Uh, maybe we must start by uh, sending a message of uh, solidarity to those workers, of municipal workers that, that are striking for their survival. They <clears throat> look like you... You are saying it has been a crisis for a while, and uh, depressing as it is, our view is that there's nothing that has been done that uh, suggested that uh, we're going to get a different result. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, uh, it's not uh, reaching 29% now because something drastically has happened in the past two, three years. We have been pursuing the same trajectory. Our view is that despite uh, good policies that have been put uh, or populated, Despite uh, the job and the investment summit that took place last year, the parties to that uh, framework agreement, uh, being government and business, have uh, simply ignored and went on a different direction. 
So, so <coughs> we always talk about what government is doing to address the unemployment crisis. I want to ask you, do you believe that business is coming to the party in the way that it should? No, it doesn't. In fact, that has been our problem. Our problem is that deep business has always been uh, demanding that government must uh, put something that is called uh, a, 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 a conducive environment for business to, to, to do business and uh, create jobs. But our view is that if you look at the jobs that have been lost in the, in the second quarter, it's mostly in mining and in the banking sector and the manufacturing, and that is private sector. The role of government in this one that I think has been failing in the past few months is that despite the job summits and the investment summit, the pronouncement by government in public was almost encouraging retrenchment because government itself has been uh, reducing uh, workers in the public service through uh, retrenching people before the retirement. They are now talking about retrenching 30,000 workers even through an early retirement. They are now talking of cutting the 10% the of, the, of, the, of the salaries of the employees there. They are talking of retrenching the SOEs. That communicates a message to private sector that, in fact, it's actually not wrong to, to retrench workers. That's our view that has led to the boldness and the confidence on the, on, on, on the private sector to retrench jobs because government is not putting a deterrent on the, on the, on, on the job plan. And then you look at an issue like ESCOM, the biggest employer, the biggest economic driver. That's what it should be in an ideal world. But yesterday we hear about net losses of 20 billion rand. How does ESCOM play its part then? It's impossible. It's supposed to play its part, uh, and, and even there, uh, alongside the, 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 the losses that they've lost now, there's also an indication that actually they're going to need around 200 or so employees to manage the generators and the power stations that are there. So it clearly shows that, in fact, even there, there's still a shortage. One of the reasons that we are, we are facing uh, in, the, in terms of the capacity of the ESCOM is the actual understaffing. But like I'm saying to you, you will have, have the Minister of Finance and the Minister of uh, Public Enterprises pronouncing that actually ESCOM has got so many workers that needs to be retrenched. But currently, we can tell you that they know they are, they are going to be uh, going on the hand of 200 more more employees. That's one thing. But at the same time, there are certain things we're not doing well. I mean, you in the past 18 months, in the past 12 months, you have had a chairperson for 18 months uh, being in charge of a, as an interim chairperson of the board. We lose 20.7 billion. You then add he, another responsibility on him to add as a CEO, and you think we're going to get something different. Mm -hmm. So uh, clearly our priorities and our intervention strategies don't seem, doesn't seem to be incompatible with the, with the crisis that we are facing now. And, and the thing <clears throat> about this unemployment crisis is that there are so many different facets to it. You talk about ESCOM as one facet, as an employment uh, driver, as an economic driver. Then there's the issue of education. Uh, part of those employment, unemployment figures that came out yesterday uh, told us 56% of young people are unemployed. Yes. So you look at the education system. Uh, is our education system driving young people into employment opportunities? We're not training and producing skills that are needed by the industry. That's our problem. Some of the industries are actually facing extinct. There are new industries that are coming in. The kind of skills that we're pro producing, we've been here before. We've been saying the issue of the education system and the curriculum, that is not uh, industry-based. The industries now are laying off workers because they are moving into auto machines. But at the same time, there are some other skills that are needed there that we can be still need in the future. But the kind of education that we're producing is not responding to the economy. So the education system is actually adding more into the kind of, uh, of, of the unemployment that is there. So it's, that's why I'm saying it's not something that uh, we were hit by a lightning yesterday. Yeah. It has been coming. Absolutely. It it's, has it's been coming. It's certainly not a new crisis. Yes. So <clears throat> what kinds of discussions are taking place now within the tripartite alliance uh, on how we're going to deal with this situation, which must be business unusual? Of course, firstly, the issue of the skills for us is very immediate and very, very urgent. The question of the, how do we turn around our education curriculum so that we, we, we indeed produce skills that are needed by the, by, by the economy. But secondly, there are new sectors that are growth, that are, are labor intensive that we must focus on. The issues of agriculture, for instance, the, 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 the land uh, 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 reformation, the, but also the issue of tourism. Those are the areas that immediately they can be labor intensive, they can absorb much of the people that are there. You know, 
even the, 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 some of the things that are done in the, the municipal level, for instance, the issues of the EPWP, we need to turn those jobs into decent jobs because those work, those, those, that, 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 that kind of service that we are providing are services that they, as a country are going to need forever. We need to permanent them, pay those people decent salary. We have got community health workers across the country that are providing basic uh, primary health care to our people that are just linked to NGOs that are just earning stipends. If you take those people and absorb them into the Department of Health, massive thousands and thousands of workers are going to be having a job security. And you must stop creating an uncertainty even to those who are employed now. You must stop creating a, a, a conducive environment for in, employees to find it very easy to, 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 to retrench workers. That's why we have called now in NetLeg for to even change the Labor Relations Act in terms of the Section 189. That makes it easy for employers when they think that they're in, in crisis uh, economic-wise, they just rush into Section 189 and retrench workers. Yeah. We, we must tighten the labor laws to make it not easy for him. It must be expensive for an employer to retrench a worker. Currently, it's very cheap. It, it can just wake up for two weeks, consult, and then you send workers to the street. Well, one thing's for sure, it's a multi-pronged challenge, uh, the issue of unemployment, uh, but just uh, the, the, the one thing everyone, I think, can agree on, everyone we've spoken to certainly, is that we are in a crisis. Thanks very much for coming into studio. Mike Shingange is Kasatu's Deputy President, joining uh, us in studio as we continue to unpack the story around the unemployment crisis.